We will need eyes to see. Coming to get you, Barbara. Yeah. Old Gordo. Abe Lincoln? Gordon no, Abe Lincoln's been Gordon dead Lightfoot. for a long time. <laughs> no, this is my Abe Lincoln salt shaker. Because so ev before... everyone, as everyone knows, the Abe, uh, Honest Abe was the saltiest of presidents. And he already has a hole in his head, so it's convenient for the salt to come. Yeah. Yeah. George Wilkes Booth really did, did him a favor. Oh. Who knew? Welcome to the Lunch Bill, boys. Ah, I'm one of the oh, hosts, shit. TJ Harkness. <laughs> also on here with me is Skyler. There is no Dana, only Zul Wood. There is no Cabo, only Wabo Wood. I'm full, and also, I'm fully Cabo Wabo today. A man who a year ago took the job as anal leakage extraordinaire. Still well, maintains the title. Let's say anal language quality assurance. Yes, Justin Splurton Burton, my butt is leaking. Um, so it's transitioned actually from poop to the hemorrhoids just bleeding all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> like I think I need to start wearing maxi pads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's weird. That's yeah. weird. Uh, <laughs> holy shit! Life. Have to go to Mayo. <laughs> so, for those that's of you who don't know that's not michelada that's hemorrhoid blood it's we, played that, hemorrhoid. <laughs> we played that song sundown for two reasons one is gordon lightfoot died this week i think it was this week at least in the last yeah week. yeah <laughs> i yeah. think he went down with the edmunds fitzgerald yeah. was he an astronaut gordon lightfoot that was Canada's greatest songwriter, okay? Oh. Not that there were that many. But still. <laughs> I'll just say. <laughs> it, so? was him or, it was him or Brian Adams. Or Ryan We've Adams. got a drink. Mr. Gordon Lightfoot. Captain Lightfoot. <laughs> yes, Captain Lightfoot. Yes. Oh. God damn. Huzzah. There's also Cinco de Mayo, so... Mm, yeah. I see somebody's in the festive spirit back there. Yeah. John Bone Jovi. <laughs> He's uh, gotten into the holiday almost in an offensive manner. He's uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to get into it. It's a little, uh, he's a little over the top. I thought maybe cool. that was the other Abe Lincoln. Here, here have some. <laughs> what? <laughs> he likes, he likes he's tequila. A, he's so, a good boy. What do you guys, my goal during this is to get, I'm already slightly inebriated and I'm trying to keep it going. So <clears throat> what are you guys drinking? Uh, well, we know what Skyler's drinking. I'm back on the uh, crown apple and monster beast mixed together. Is that like a Mr. Beast? Mr. No, I remember. Mr. I, had this other, I had this a couple episodes again. It's like, oh yeah, uh, went to yeah. Ohio to get it. It's the the hard monster, six percent alcohol shit. Oh, it's super pretty good hard. mixed with Crown Apple. It's so hard. But I finished my Crown Apple bottle, so I'll have to get another something. Some something. Zool, what are you having? Well, I was, uh, you know. Of some Cabo Wabo, Sammy Hagar's finest tequila, and a big fat Michelada. Mmm, I seen you rubbing a lime on there. Got me all hot and bothered. I was rubbing it on my nips. I got me a. Uh, What's that? Th this is an Ezra. Virgin Daiquiri. Ezra mm. Brooks. Bourbon? Is that, a, is that a round ice cube? Fuck yeah, dude. I got oh, a round yeah. ice cube thing. He's, he's got Fuck ice balls. Nice. Ice balls are the shit. A Modelo Special. Hey, you yeah, can put I those ice balls in your butthole. No, you could. Fit right in there? You could. They yeah. feel great. 
No. <laughs> Especially if you, have, if you have if you have hemorrhoids, you can sit right on them. You might think about that with your bleeding a hole. Well, the, best part about, the best part about shoving, I, <laughs> is this I'm church? To, I'm trying to clean it up here on this yeah, whole, holiest of holidays. <laughs> the best part about shoving ice up your asshole is that it melts so it can't get stuck. That's true. Like you get... Learn that lesson. Oh, that went down the wrong hole <laughs> because you said that. Fool me uh, once. Fool me once. Shame on you. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. no, that Modelo went down the wrong hole when you said that because I started giggling. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't this. mean to kill TJ. It went like down the, the same hole as the ice ball. Oh, no, didn't go down my pee hole. I never waste an ice icicle in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. So Azul said today is Cinco de Mayo. It probably won't be when you get to this episode, but we'll bring the spirit of the holiday to whatever day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... We encourage you uh, to get tequila. I don't care if you're at work or driving. <laughs> you're listening to this episode. You got to be drinking tequila. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Okay, I'm not encouraging oh, drinking and driving. I'm not. If you do, that's your uh, that's your prerogative. Mm. You're an adult making this decision. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I drove home from work the other day with a Miller Lite opened up in my car. Yeah. I had a panic. I had a panic attack the whole way home. Why wouldn't you just drink it? I did. I chugged it. <laughs> That's probably worse because, you know, you're slamming a beer. If you were just yeah. sipping the thing, you know, you'd be. You know. <sighs> so I will say, road beers can't beat them, especially after a work day. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Oh my God! Or going camping, and you're just excited about getting there, so you crack open a beer before you get there, and you're like. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Sorry, that was a burp. The bourbon burp. But. Sorry, that was a. <laughs> that, was a <laughs> that was a bourbon fart. <laughs> that was a bourbon fart. That was his ice hole fart. That was an ice hole burp. <laughs> that was a hemorrhoid fart. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, did I ever show you this? Dude, Go Greyhounds. Yeah. I'm surprised Burton knew what that was. The Greyhounds. Well, there's a fucking Greyhound on the goddamn thing. It's not a stretch to... It's a half of a dog. I couldn't tell if that was a Greyhound unless I knew it. Plus, they have a really good wrestling team for... Do they? For a Juco. Nah. We're not a Juco. Their wrestling team is. A what? How are they, How can they be their Division 2? Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I thought they were a Okay, college. let's let's not dwell on the UND wrestling teams. <laughs> <laughs> on their Jew, Jewish co. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be covering a cryptid that I hadn't heard of until like maybe a year or two ago, listening to one of my favorite podcasts. Um, it's a really cool story. Uh, not real scary, so... It's weird. Sort of fun. It's weird, but yeah. fun. I'm not, I mean... Yeah, I still haven't heard of this thing. Me neither. So, yeah. This is the story of Sam, the Sundown Clown. Sundown, you better take care. When TJ told said, me about this on the phone, I thought he said the sun, the uh, Sundown Clam. <laughs> that's a different. That's what we call open. whores around this area. That's a different Street thing. That's a, I think those are lot lizards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just hoping it was a, it was a clam cryptid. <laughs> That's what I was really hoping for. <laughs> We're going to have to look. It's meth be slapping, yo. <laughs> so, in the summer of 1973, two young kids who were on vacation with their families on the Isle of Wight, which is in the United Kingdom, would have an odd encounter with a being that would later be identified as Sam the Sundown Clown. Sundown. You gotta take care. If I find you been creeping around my back stairs. Woohoo, you're not a clam. You're a clown, and that's what this is about. <laughs> so, well, the story isn't the scariest thing we've covered. It's pretty fucking odd. Um, odd as in something that seems as if it was popped right out of like a 
a G or a PG rated Stephen King novel. Yeah, with less child, uh, with less child orgies. Well, what's so why I said G or PG. Yeah. Okay. The creature yeah. would be described as a cross between a clown, robot, and alien. Hmm. So you like coming out and like touching their belly buttons? I'm going. What the fuck? Sammy the clam, he's got gotcha. you. I don't think he's the. <laughs> it's not a Pillsbury Doughboy. Get over here, kid. There he is. Whoo! You guys having a birthday party? Sammy the Clown Clams, he had a Dinatania. <laughs> he's also from oh my Jersey. God. <laughs> uh, Why do all your the... accents revert back to <laughs> Jersey? It's the alcohol, sorry. Yeah. It becomes a guido. Uh, it becomes a. <laughs> Whatever. Guido. You're gonna say a Guido. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Is that a thing? I don't know. I just, it's an Italian I, slur, I believe. Oh, Gym sorry, Italians. Laundry, I didn't. Bro. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Uh, yeah, yeah. GTL. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. You know, my grandma once <laughs> referred to a broken bottle. As a... No, don't, don't, no. Yeah, you're the one's got to edit that crap out. So fuck it. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. <laughs> uh, I guess she was sort of racist. She was kind of racist. <laughs> she always said, Soda. she always told me to be nice to the Jewish kids. Anyway. Uh. So. <laughs> while following a sound that resembled some kind of an ambulance siren, these uh, couple children uh, wandered across the footbridge over a stream and met a curious, unidentifiable being not bean, being that has been like described a pinto? As, has been, as we said, cross, uh, no, not a pinto, maybe a pinto. I don't know. What's, uh, what's like a clown robot alien bean? What kind Definite of bean is that? Pinto. Pinto. Green okay, pinto. fine. Yeah. So as we said, it came across a being that, as we described as a cross between a clown robot and alien, it was shy, but friendly. And it spoke kindly to the children for almost half an hour before they returned home to their parents. This sounds like the beginning of like uh, one of those law and order sexual crime shows where they're dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> so you're saying it was a clown robot alien and it touched you? No, it didn't touch us. It touched my brain, mom. Touch my brain. Oh my god. Not my pee pee hole. Oh my it god. Made it made us feel special. Me. Who told you about the brain? It didn't do the bat wing for you, did it? <laughs> anyway. God, I'll never forget getting to play that game when we worked at Long John Silver's. Oh god. Uh, that's why I never ate at Long John Silver's. They're back there touching their penises. Yeah. I did the goat. JC always did the, the bat wing. <laughs> the bat wing where you pull your ball sack. And it looks like a bat wing. So you're saying the, 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 the movie Waiting is basically all true. You yeah, but that? I think we started doing it because of that movie. Yeah, yeah okay. Good thing so that JC movie probably, probably doesn't listen more. to this, so. <laughs> no, I doubt it. Anyway, this, uh, <clears throat> after they returned to their parents, the creature seemingly vanished after the encounter and has never been seen again. So it's kind of a one-off You know, hey, 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 I'm out of here. Touch your go. brain and go. Come on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, our story about Sammy the Sundown Clown. Sand? Sandown? Yeah. Sandown. Sandown. Sundown. Hmm, the clam. <laughs> takes place on the outskirts of Sandown. Sandown is a seaside town on the uh, southern end of the Isle of Wright. White. The Isle of White. I think it's, it's right. White. It's a white isle. White true. So it's quite racist. It's the, the white isle. Um, uh, this town has a rich history, stretching back into the Roman period when the area was used primarily for salt production. So that's why it's called the White Isle. All the salt. Go mm. figure. Salty. Just and... Like... <laughs> Mr. Oh, Abe's head. Mm. Yep. All that blood. <laughs> <clears throat> and up until the 19th century, 
Sandown was exclusively used as a military site since the beaches offered amazing access to invading French troops. <laughs> that access was quite. You said amazing like it was on a vacation resort. <clears throat> amazing this, beaches. Yeah. This amazing this access, beaches for the troops. Access this access is, troops. yeah. It's, it's super just, I love it when the troops can access my beach. It's all inclusive. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, when I'm going on vacation, I look for a beach that looks like troops could storm it at any, any moment. Like, it's really yeah. accessible. You see that beach? Myrtle. Ah, man. Yeah. God, I love it when the troops storm my beach. Um, uh, with the arrival of the train in the 1800s, they got a train all the way down in the Sandown Beach, apparently. Uh, Sandown then grew into a beach resort town, and it would become known as um, that into the 20th and 21st century. So now it's, you know, it's a <clears throat> fancy little beach town. Hmm. Sandtown, today's, beach town. Today's Sandown is a traditional British seaside town featuring a long stretch of sandy beach. High streets filled with uh, shops, various attractions, you know, run-of-the-mill wildlife sanctuaries. What's really cool is they have a dinosaur museum. Oh, sweet. Nice. An area which, apparently the area is really rich in dinosaur bones. British dinosaurs. Oi, can I have a spot of tea? <laughs> Oi, Gardner. Nice day for a pint, ain't it? Yes, Mr. Tyrannosaurus. You're drinking. <laughs> oh my god. <gosh. laughs> what are you we doing, have... my roar? <laughs> Henry, the T Rex ain't gonna appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> He's the king. He's the king. <laughs> uh, what if they had a king and a queen dinosaur on that, on that island? That's right, the T Rex and Miss T Rex. Mrs. T Rex. So, Mrs. T. Uh, they had a Mr. T Queen and Mrs. Rex. T. And they also have a quintessential Victor Victorian pier with a large arcade and beautiful views of the cliffs nice. and sea. I like those Victorian hmm. arcades. I like quintessentials. Uh, you know, that's my favorite part. I want to fucking murder you so fucking bad, Burton. I love it. <laughs> I want you to quintessentially murder me. Hmm. On my beach. Storm my beach, renamed, Johnny. I want my beach Storm. to be renamed Murder Beach. Storm me harder, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get your artillery on me. You heard it, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve Wainick, get over here and fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. My, that, Burden, what the? Why? <laughs> that escalated quickly. Sorry. So now Sandown. So now Sandown is everything you expect from a seaside town. Uh, it's busy in the summertime, quiet in the wintertime. Plenty of tour, plenty of tourists coming and going, and often returning. I do the first part for the, for the beautiful beaches and the stunning views. It certainly isn't the type of place one would expect to run into some kind of alien robot Ronald McDonald. Huh. <laughs> That'd be scary. Yeah. Please sit on my lap, small children. <laughs> play in my area. Would French like fries with my penis. Pound. Quarter pounder. Quarter pounder. <laughs> Hamburger. <laughs> Have what it your way. Grimace doesn't show up, we'll be good. Okay, I don't want that oh, purple wait, dildo. I'd rape the fuck out of Grimace, dude. He's a purple dildo, man. He's, you know, he's Fuck supposed yeah, to represent the shit out of him. like the milkshake or something. I think I heard once. Hmm. I don't know how. Who wants her milkshakes know. purple and hairy? I don't know. I, they don't have purple milkshakes. They don't even have ice cream half the time. That's like going down on a girl in the 1970s. You get your cream and your hair. Yeast? Huh. Oh. No, not yeast. Cream. I thought you were, I thought you were gonna say yeast. Well, make me a fucking cake. Uh, uh. It's natural. <laughs> um, all right, so the uh, information that we're going to be bringing to you comes from a British research association who researches UFOs. 
<clears throat> the uh, British UFO Research Association, or Bufora. Such a fucking. <laughs> Sounds like something you do on your ex girlfriend's chest. Yeah. Oh, God, honey, I gotta go down to the boofer alas tonight, you know, and uh, mm. talk about this uh, communist alien fucking bozo. I'm in bufora. I was um, thinking more of, I just got off. Is it okay if I take a big bufora on your chest? <laughs> I thought it was redneck for, I'm gonna come, but before I do. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah, that's, please that's say it. a prayer. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, <laughs> we're, <laughs> specifically, we're going to be uh, taking notes from the January-February issue in 1978. Um, Bufora was founded in 1964 to investigate UFO reports around the British oils. According to their website, Bufora is a non-cultist and scientifically equivalent or sorry, a non-cultist and scientifically evalu <clears throat> evaluative, evaluative, it's hard to say, evaluative, it's hard to say in a British accent, <laughs> uh, organization. And until 2005, they published the Bufora Journal. Mm, I'm going to go down to rallies and get me a big Bufora. Mm. With cheese? With double <laughs> cheese. Or as other before. people know it as checkers. Mm. Mm. I don't know what's called checkers. Japanese restaurant. I'd like w the checkers. chicken before, please. <laughs> the, sh the shrimp before. Before I rape it or after. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> Watch the, the R word, TJ. You're uh, raping everything tonight, and it's not good. Yeah, yeah. That's, I told uh, you you're horny. You got to jerk that some bitch off so you can calm down a little got, bit. They got them frustrations <laughs> building up right now. Do I you're you looking at me awfully weird. Do I need to send you That's some what keeps like moving off in the uh, TJ, <sighs> you need to start you up a Tinder account. No. I mean, do they bring you firewood? Listen, TJ needs fuck, so if you're out there. <laughs> nope, I don't. And you're looking for some dick. He just needs TJ's <laughs> got that monster can filling cock. He just needs that uh, meat tenderizer. Yeah. Or if anyone's willing to at least spread their butthole and let him masturbate to you, please hit him up on his personal no, Facebook page. Don't. <laughs> Nobody wants this fat motherfucker beating off it, over him. <laughs> TJ, you were so hot. Definitely. Okay, so let's get back. <laughs> it's it's, been, it's been a year. Hold on. It's been a year and like three months since we started doing this or something like that, and we have not gotten any sort of like correspondence from any person listening, and this is the time we will. T we're going to get yes. flooded with butthole pictures for TJ. That would be so awesome. And then TJ can be flooded. Oh, God. So he'll be, my dad he'll be, today, off topic. He'll be drained. <laughs> my dad went to go get, uh, he gets shites, shots in his oh, eyes. He gets shites. <laughs> Sorry. He gets shots in his eyes. I'm mildly inebriated. Um, mm. So excuse shots me. Shots of what? But he gets it. Um, like needles. Like, yeah, no, for medicine. Okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, Susan, his wife, told me, oh, it's going to turn your dad into a monkey. And I said, oh. Well, if so, take a picture of his brown eye. Susan goes, what did you just say? And I said, take a picture of his brown eye. What's a brown eye? I said, his butthole. <laughs> she got real quiet. And she goes, I think that's the weirdest thing you've ever said in your life. She goes, that's your dad. And I'm like, well, if he's a monkey, he's not my dad. So take all the pictures you want of his butthole. Because I want to see a monkey butthole. <laughs> and, my, and my dad got real quiet. And he's like. I don't know what to say to this. He goes, <laughs> that makes two of us. I don't know what the Why fuck to make of any of this. Uh, it's not my dad. It's a monkey butthole. But how did it go from? Okay, that's right. She said she turned him into a monkey. All right, if you're listening and you're a monkey and you've not gotten laid in a while, TJ wants to fuck your butthole. <laughs> Send a picture of your butthole if you can. Nope, no, I, I almost agreed. No, I don't. <laughs> TJ, don't go to the... Hey, if you're a zoo owner... Do not let TJ in your zoo. <laughs> Next thing you see yeah, me oh, over in the fair. fucking chimpanzee area. That's fair. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Who wants the, a banana? The Fort Wayne Zoo is going to be like a big picture of TJ. Mm -hmm. Do not let this ape in here. That was pervert on the goddamn premises. <laughs> There's uh, all these single mom fucking monkeys now. They got half TJ baby and they're like, that motherfucker. It'll be a thing one day probably. Be like, yeah, probably. I'm a monkey fucker. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> mm. 
monkey fuckers' rights matter. Anyway. <clears throat> so, back to the Buforia journal. The cover of uh, the issue that actually features old Sammy uh, appears as a tall, again, tall robot-like humanoid speaking into a microphone hooked up to some kind of little boombox. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, I, I picture, like, the little kid's toy. Actually, I think one of my kids has one. It's a little... Yep. It's annoying as shit, because uh, when they yell on it, it doesn't sound good. It just makes them louder, which isn't what they need. But anyway, uh, <gasps> that's what I'm picturing, this little uh, clown man. Clown man. So the witnesses of the Sam encounter were, like we said, two children, a seven-year-old girl who they referred to as Faye, and a boy of similar age who they didn't give him a name, or they didn't give his name, so I'm going to call him... Vincent Adult Man, <laughs> which for those of you who's watched BoJack Horseman know it's the kid that's dressed up like an adult. He's just a series. He's like three kids. Didn't yep. Sitting on each other's arms in a trench coat. I'm going to the factory to do my adult work. <laughs> yep. Have fun at the job factory. <clears throat> so, oh, Vincent he's Adult got, Man. He's got brooms for hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, in the May... Of 1973, on a Tuesday afternoon around 4 p.m., both Vincent, Adult Man, and Faye were vacationing with their families near Lake Common and Sandown. Both kids were playing with each other when Faye and Vincent heard a weird sound uh, similar to, like, the warbling of an ambulance. Curious, they followed the noise across the golf course and towards the swampy area outside Sandown Airport until the noise suddenly stopped. You said the kids were playing with each other, and immediately I went to, this is like it. Mm-hmm. Oh, my Stephen God. King classic. At least I'm Holy so. crap. You know. I'm going to murder you so fucking hard. <laughs> Monkey so butt hard. God, you must. Skyler, uh, you're lucky you're not a monkey butthole, or he'd fuck you. He's calling me a monkey butthole, so I'm kind of afraid for my... Virginity. I'm eye fucking you right now. That's only one step away from computer fucking you. Oh, I do just want to. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Let's get in there. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I just stick my own finger down my throat. Don't, like my... don't look at this. Don't look at this. Don't look at this, John. Mm. I don't want you to see. Hey, he's too busy with cultural appropriation. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> see. Oh, oh, Mara. He had some Moroccans <laughs> and he lost them. I used to be able to fit a lot of big things in my mouth, but my jaw is tighter now. Okay, Zul, you can keep going. Uh, uh, so the kids... <clears throat> the kids were quite <clears throat> curious. Some would call them curious little fucks. Hmm. I wouldn't, but some would. Uh, you know, the type of kids who always die first in a Stephen King movie. Are we going back to the Stephen King movie? Uh... So these kids kept looking for the source of this strange warbling noise when they came across Ooh. a wooden footbridge. And uh, now if so you read Stephen made wooden feet? is made out of wood. Uh, oh, I thought it was wooden uh, feet. Wooden feet, uh, maybe. Mm. A lot of wooden cool. feet, probably, depending on the size <clears throat> of the gap it's trying to... I'm really fucking confused. How in the fuck did we get on wooden feet right now? He said wooden he, feet. Now I'm thinking of a wooden feet bridge. He said he, he came across a wooden foot bridge. So I just natu- naturally just assumed that it's a bridge made out of wooden feet. It could either be a bridge made of feet or a bridge for people on feet on a foot. <laughs> we'll leave it up to the listener to determine it. People on feet. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It means they're walking. It means they're walking. <laughs> Call me Christopher because I'm walking. <clears throat> anyway, so if you read Stephen King's It or have watched the movie Troll, you might not you might know not to go around the bridge or the sewer systems. But these kids, you know, they're British. They have no frame of reference to either of these things. <laughs> so they walked up to the bridge and 
this is where they first met their new best friend, Sam. An excerpt from the Bufora report states, Bufora. A blue-gloved hand appeared from under the bridge, and a strange figure emerged. <laughs> is it a Muppet doing the reporting? <laughs> 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 yes, it is. <laughs> I gotta shut your fucking up. The figure fumbled with a book. It sounds like a okay. black cartoon reporter. <laughs> <laughs> so, the figure fumbled with a book and dropped it in the water, then splashed about to retrieve it. The two watched the figure in her metallic hut, similar to that used on the building sites, except... <laughs> That it had no windows. It moved along with a strange hopping ocean and both knees raised high. <laughs> so, this dude's doing like some sort of like, whoa, whoa, with this book and it dropped in the water. Oh, what am I doing with this book? <clears throat> He's like, oh, I can't balance it instead of grabbing it with one hand. Whoa. I want a Metallica hut. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's our newest album, I think it is. They partnered with Pizza Hut on that one. Yeah. Pizza Hut's trying to make it come back. It's called Pizza Hut. Yeah. God damn it. Putting in the salad bar. Hiya. <laughs> you want a, a 12 inch pizza? pizza. <laughs> Putting in the salad bar, the story of Bobby Harkness. I mean, it's going to come I can't back even up. think of any Metallica songs to sing right now. Um, so <laughs> do, they say, do they have any famous songs? Exit pizza. <laughs> Enter my mouth. My mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Take, Take my hand. butts and TJ will fuck them. <laughs> that did not go together. Oh, you're, yeah. We need to work on that. Yeah, we, oh, that, okay. was, that was a, that was ad lib. So you know, forgive, yeah. forgive, and forget. Yeah. yeah, TJ, why don't you just go? I don't know. Go fuck a monkey Anyways. butt. <laughs> <laughs> Sam the Dancing Clown was about six feet in height, so, you know. Damn. Uh, had uh, more or less of human, he was more or less two human proportions, two arms, two legs, and a round head with uh, identifiable facial, facial features. <clears throat> the similarities in there, however, as Sam had a big head, one too big for his thin frame, and the head was shaped uh, like a near-perfect sphere. Sphere. Uh, spherical. Its skin was very white, very white, and Ooh. it had the consistency of paper. While its hands and feet possessed only three digits each, Sam seemed to have been crudely painted onto the surface. Oh, uh, sorry. Sam's face seemed to have been crudely painted onto the surface of its head. Uh, two triangles uh, seemingly representing his eyes, <laughs> while a flat brown rectangle served for a nose, and his mouth had a thin yellow lips shaped like an oval, which did not move at all when it spoke or ate. Huh. Now, its hair hung down beneath its hat in sparse, frizzled, reddish-brown strands, and two wooden antennae stuck out from the sides of its mm. head, while more wooden slat-like antennae extended from its wrists and ankles. What the fuck is going on with this guy? Hey, wood is probably the best antenna you can get. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really picks up. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get channel four in with my wooden antenna and every yeah. day. Yeah. My wood picks up all kinds of signals. <laughs> there you go. Not rapey signal. Why am I going to rape today? God damn. Because you need to get fucking your butthole licked. This is what happens when you I'm drink s- too much bourbon. I'm still married. TJ, stop fucking monkeys. Okay? We only have one one world. All right? Yep, and as Bon Jovi once said, it's my life, <laughs> and it's now or never. Yeah, and you're halfway <laughs> there. So, <clears throat> or like Steven Tyler said, you're living on a prayer. That was like a poem, didn't even know it. 
Okay. So, <laughs> so at this point, time. most Generation Xers and Millennials would have personally fled the scene. You know, our negative exposure to clowns named Pennywise have forever scarred our collective psyches. These two curious fuckers, Faye and Vincent, stuck around the area. But they did what back you... up around 50 yards from the... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, he's, he's bobbling around his notebook he's got, like a, like a freaking like Curly from Three Whoa. Stooges. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'd feel a little disarmed by that, too. Yeah. I'm sure he was entertaining. Yeah. So they, really... back, they backed up around 50 yards from him. <clears throat> and uh, to the point where they couldn't see him no more. And then all of a sudden, he sort of peeked out again, like, hey! <laughs> This time, he was carrying a black knob microphone with a white cord attached. <laughs> Scripted karaoke. He's going to start singing. Yeah, I was going to say, all of a sudden, you start hearing him singing a time from the newly released Pink Floyd album, Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> I kind of have a feeling, but he sounds something like Bob Dylan. Yep. Singing it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Drifting away, the moments that make up a dull day. <laughs> Fitter and waste, the hours in an offset way. Mm. Uh, it would have been awesome if he would have actually done that. But instead of wailing <laughs> from before, but or excuse me, instead uh, the wailing from before returned. So he went back to the. So he's not singing like Bob Dylan. He's singing like Yoko Ono in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Oh, God. So this time Vincent didn't want to hear it. And he said, fuck this and ran away. Uh, Faye saw the little scaredy, patootie, foodie running away. And so she's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out, too. Hold on. You wouldn't say chicken shit, but you would say fuck this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, the creature, I assume, in response to scaring the kids away, was like, okay, well, I guess they don't want to be my friend and quit doing the screeching sound. So he's like, la, 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 la. aww. He probably just figured out that they don't like high pitched. <laughs> I've we got my windows open right now. <laughs> <laughs> my neighbors are probably looking out their window like some young girl is over there being raped officer we oh need to take God. care of this <laughs> jesus christ you are like he, he's a horned up motherfucker dude i'm telling <laughs> I you am not, i don't know what <laughs> so after oh, sammy the clam stopped screeching he began to speak into the microphone Faye, who at this point followed vincent to a decent distance away claimed they could hear the figure talking as if he is standing right next to them they heard his voice ask as if he was directly in their ears. Hello, are you still there? <laughs> Faye and Vincent noticed that the creature didn't sound like an asshole, and it sounded somewhat friendly, so they turned around. That's what an asshole sounds a, like. And they approached it. <laughs> as they approached the karaoke singing creature, they began to like see more and more of uh, his appearance with greater clarity. Huh. Even though the initial contact was weird and the creature also looked weird, both Vincent and Faye decided to speak to him. Both hesitantly approached and the figure pulled out a notebook and wrote in large letters. Hello, I am all colors, Sam. <laughs> so Faye read the confusing message out loud, Is and that like the all two children. All colors, Sam. I'm gonna murder you. So they continued to move closer to the clown. They realized then, after Sam initiated verbal conversation. That his lips did not move when he spoke, which made his voice 
difficult to understand. Far away, across the field, the tolling of the iron bell calls the faithful to their knees <laughs> to hear the softly spoken magic spell. I love that part of time, dude. It's good. It is pretty good. He had to finish it. You know, Sam had to finish it. He had to get through it. He had the microphone. <clears throat> so now Sam uh, began asking these quid kids quest quids kids quids. questions, and both kids asked questions in return. It was a nice little back and forth between these two young children and the weird clown alien robot. <laughs> One of the questions was about Sam's ripped clothes, and Sam replied that they were the only clothes he owned. Which is kind of rude of the kids, you know, fucking entitled brats. Not everyone What's can afford bright clothes. new clothes. Not everyone can afford bright new clothes. Yeah. Fuck Dude, that. fucking elitist kids. Class conflict right there at its finest. <laughs> Yep. Mr. Class. Clown, why is your clothes all ripped up? No, why don't you have nicer clothes, basically? He's like, Every I'm a homeless year. robot clown. <laughs> <laughs> I suck dick over here for a quarter. <laughs> Little boy, do you have a quarter? You ever suck dick for coke, man? That's an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> um, you ever the kid also asked... No... No, I don't think marijuana could take the sting out of that one. R.I.P. But... Bob Saget. Mm -hmm. The kids also asked why Sam's skin was unnaturally white. Um, the children asked if he was uh, really a man witch. He replied, A man witch? No. They inquired <laughs> further. If he was a ghost, and Sam replied, <laughs> "Well, not really, but I am, in an odd sort of way." <laughs> then the children asked, "What are you then?" And Sam replied with a vague, "You know." <laughs> Without elaborating any further on it. The, ah, you know. <laughs> so the kids asking if Sam was a ghost is a reflection. I would say at that time of like the paranormal zeitgeist of the time. There were some stories of UFOs and aliens and other weird creatures, but it was, you know, it wasn't anywhere near the pop culture forefront that it is today. So the kids asking if he was a ghost, you know, I would say is more apt to the the time. <clears throat> now these conversations, they became weirder and weirder and weirder as they went along. Sam told the two kids that he had no name, even though he introduced himself as Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the addition of the name initially may have uh, been used to help the kids associate Sam with a human or something more comfortable than a scary clown weirdo uh, hanging out in a metal box, you know, <laughs> by, a, by a bridge made of feet. Don't tell your mom. God damn it. <laughs> Report this clown to DCS. <laughs> <clears throat> Sammy the, sh the sundown clam clown then drew a sketch of what another like him looked like implying that there were other Sams around um, Sam confided that humans frightened him and he was actually afraid of being attacked but if he was he said he wouldn't fight back so he's a big old bitch robot alien. No, clown. it's a good thing he wasn't over here. <clears throat> he's fragile. He's very fragile. He's a pacifist. Clark, there's just there's this gay clown alien guy out there. Get your shotgun, shoot him first. <laughs> Was it the Griswolds? <laughs> it's the uh, it's the people of Orange County. 
See if he's got any meat first. <laughs> we'll throw him in the freezer. He's a pasty <laughs> motherfucker. I don't know. I don't know if I want to eat that. Uh, uh, so now, so far, Sam is weird, but he seems like, you know, he may be friendly. No. Might give him a McFlurry later. You never know. But this is where it sort of became weird. Sam invited both kids into his windowless metal hut, which I believe is somewhere around like three or four foot tall. Mm. Um, and it has a door, which is maybe two foot tall, mm-hmm. almost like a dog flap door. Oh, so he's Faye like, and Vincent. He opens the door and he's like, we're off to never, never land. <laughs> It doesn't open anything. The door. Sorry, I got my music on in here, guys. <laughs> Both Faye and Vincent accepted Sam's invitation without any issues and entered. Both kids had to crawl, like I said, through a small like dog flap <laughs> to get inside. Why don't you crawl through my flap? You guys will love oh. it. I don't think you should touch a dog's flap. Just, just putting that out there. Um, Take a picture of it. Me- crawl through my Metallica flap. Your kids are going to love it. <laughs> what is that face? That it's, face was... It's a good flap. It's a good flap. I'm so <laughs> concerned right now with you. I think you'd be the perfect like Chomo character if you had that straight face again talking about flaps. <laughs> Uh, I just love flaps. <laughs> I love flaps. I love flap. I love yeah. flap. These guys did not watch Hansel and Gretel. Mm-hmm. I think that clown was going to eat them. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Probably we'll their see. butts at least. <laughs> it was TJ and they were monkeys, maybe. Monkeys. Yeah. But I just want to take pictures he'd of rape, them. He'd probably rape them. The monkeys. The monkey butts? The children. No. Yes. Yeah, Perhaps. not the kids. Perhaps. Perhaps. I don't want to lose my job. Not the kids. No, no. Yeah. Not the kids. Upon entering the uh, abode, Sam removed his hat to reveal round white ears and sparse brown hair. Hmm. The children described the interior of the shack as containing two levels. Oh, so they have Jesus. Two Two, two floors, spacious. The first, or the ground floor, was covered in a blue-green wallpaper that had patterns of dials. And the floor I sing also away. had an elect- <laughs> That's the perfect time <laughs> the reference. Floor also had- yeah. The- he, he really liked Pink Floyd's uh, Dark Side. He decorated the house in, in that motif. Uh, the floor has also had an electric, electric heater... And oh. wooden furniture. Oh, to go along with the uh, wooden footbridge. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, wonder how would, where the utility hookups were brought in from. But it, whatever. It's, well, he might have been stealing power. This might be a meth head clown. British, like, ra- robot clown. I don't think he was a robot. I think he was just, doesn't get outside much and too busy uh, listening to Pink Floyd smoking meth. <laughs> Story as old as time. Uh, the first floor also had less headroom than the ground floor with uh, metallic flooring this one had. Sam hinted that he also had a camp on the mainland, but he didn't say where. Keeping on the down low. <clears throat> Wait, so this place, like it was like, Four foot high, three foot high, and they walk in it, and it's like two floors. Yeah, hmm. that is a bizarre. It, it yeah. <clears throat> Boy, this thing really opens up when you come inside. Doesn't look like much from the outside, but <laughs> that's what God I said damn. to her last night. God <laughs> damn, that opens up when you come inside. <laughs> <laughs> See how monkey butts are. <laughs> well, there's Poor that. Gordon's asshole. That's something TJ said. Uh, <laughs> Sam and the kids began to discuss his diet. Sam said that he ate mostly berries and that he collected them during the afternoon. 
Sam didn't disclose the location of his scavenging because he was an uptight dick. He also said that after cleaning the water from the nearby river, it was safe to drink. He demonstrated how he ate the berries. <laughs> the following explanation is from the Bufora Journal article. Before eating a berry, he performed an odd conjuring trick. He placed the berry... <laughs> God damn it, Burton. <laughs> Uh, before eating a berry, he performed an odd conjuring trick. He placed the berry in his ear, thrust his head forward, and caused the berry to disappear. <laughs> he thrust and his reappear, And reappear at, in his odd eyes. <laughs> Repeating the process, the berry traveled to his mouth. Which, a possible explanation was he is wearing some kind of protective mask analyzing the berry and checking to make sure it was poison it wasn't poisonous Boop. you don't put your food in your ear it's a good way I to taste penis is a mine mm, like that i give ear, ear jobs mm. <laughs> these kids and sam had developed a bit of a rapport over the time they spent together had enough of an interest in each other to carry on these uh, conversations for another 30 minutes and after Faye and Mr. Vincent Adultman bid Sam farewell and retreated back across the golf course, both kids were unscathed and weren't victims of any alien clown molestation. Hmm. A, a nice... A, a nice end to a story yeah. about a strange person clown living in a small windowless metal shed. Hmm. Because it could have gone really... It could have gone wrong. Yeah. Really quick. I'm glad the kids weren't reamed out. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Skyler's luck. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's why I never that's why we've never heard about it. <laughs> fucking, Skyler's face. This clown didn't know how to seal the deal. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. The clown was putting on his best moves to try to try to Oh my god, try to violate these two children. He just couldn't pull it off. Em and Bob Seeger were working at it. Mm hmm. Working on their night moves. Black um, rock. <laughs> Ooh. That's how I try to get him to stay. He's like, I'm like a rock. <laughs> Anyways, both kids told the, the uh, first man they saw that they had seen a ghost. Um, but they didn't believe, but he didn't believe them. So, according to. Before I, the children were truly convinced that they had encountered a ghost or someone dressed up in a particularly odd costume. Either way, they were very much under the impression that their experience was genuine, or so they claim. <clears throat> so, on June 2nd, 1973, three weeks after the kids had a conversation <clears throat> with Sam, Faye confided in her father who will refer to as Mr. Y, about her strange encounter. He commented Why? on the detailed... Yeah, I don't know. Mm. So, he commented Why? on the detailed Why? description of his daughter's experience, which he was able to briefly verify with Vincent and how upset she was when he suggested it wasn't entirely truthful. Mr. Y thought, of an, expl thought an explanation of Sam <clears throat> could be make believe or a shared hallucination or a person dressed up to scare the children. Who in the fuck would do that? I mean, he did a terrible However, job. However, he it. felt. Yeah. Of trying to scare them. However, he felt a per quite pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A particular detail Faye gave about Sam having three fingers and toes on each hand and foot was decidingly too difficult for someone to convincingly fake. <clears throat> huh. There's also something that was left out of the initial report that happened three years prior to Faye and Vincent's account. Um, that only caused uh, Mr. Y to believe a little bit more. Mr. Y had his own bizarre experience that made him take his daughter's tale with a little bit more seriousness. On a Tuesday, October 20, 
1970, three years earlier, Mr. Y was driving towards St. Helens on the Isles of Wright. Wright. White. Mm. White right? I don't know which one it is. White right. White rice. White. On his way to the town called R Ride <laughs> to visit a friend. I'm not nailing it here is what I'm doing. TJ, were you drunk when you wrote this shit? <laughs> no, that's the actual name, Ride. It's British. They were all drunk when they fucking made this shit up. Uh, so... On his way to a town called Ride. <laughs> Apparently he was fellatiating himself while he was driving around. <laughs> <clears throat> he was riding to a town called Ride to visit a friend named <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> to his right. <laughs> to his right, right Mr. Y suddenly saw a huge Rhino, or mm -hmm. a large multi-lit aircraft flying low over the marshlands along the river Yar. Yar, Peter! <laughs> the Pirate not, River! This is a made-up fucking thing. This is all made up. These aren't real words. I'm having a stroke right now, I think. Who the fuck is Steve the Pirate? Star Yar, Peter! <laughs> Jesus Christ Oh my goodness If you're so, not a pirate then who am I going to share all this gold with <laughs> Okay so if you didn't follow Mr. Y suddenly saw a large Multi-lit aircraft Flying low over the marshlands Along the river Yar <laughs> Mr. Y Being stricken with curiosity <laughs> Pulled over to observe the craft And noted that T'was a wide ring of seven or more lights could be seen. Each of them a large and clearly defined sphere. Arr. Light, a bright, like a bright red cherry, and interspersed with a turquoise and white light. No sound could be heard right by rider rectangular right <laughs> rough. I just want to commend you for changing up accents midway through. <laughs> you know, obviously, there's no fucking pirate riding around talking to stuff. Yar! <laughs> in Britain or in the UK, you know. Oh, it's a nice day today, wouldn't you say? Arr. <laughs> Yarp. So, hey, uh... Mr. Y resumed driving, and the object continued to fly parallel to him, eventually flying around 300 yards behind the car while rotating slowly. Mm. <laughs> this dude has some fucking balls, because he stopped his car again, got out, and started to signal the craft with his fucking uh, lighter, which I believe they call it a torch over there. Hey, Mike, come here. Hey, uh -oh. Blakey. You know, I could get a good pint of Guinness around here. Yep, like Ian Malcolm trying to s distract the T-Rex. <laughs> hey. Ah. The no alien's like, can you believe that guy? He's down there waving a fucking lighter like it's a fucking concert. <laughs> this ain't Freebird, motherfucker. Mm. But the aircraft continued to follow him. When he reached his destination, his friends also witnessed the object. Plain hide and seek between the treetops. I do that with my wiener sometimes. In the I tuck it back, and I, trees? no, well, I tuck it back, and then I turn around so my butt's showing, and then, like, if I bend over, it'll be like, hey! <laughs> Sorry, there's like a hundred fucking elephants above me. Well, they can probably identify with me. Hmm, TJ. I just thought about that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> God damn it. Upon leaving his friend's house... <laughs> 
The aircraft <laughs> was gone. Following the incident, Mr. Y would occasionally see, quote, <laughs> single balls of red, <laughs> of red light in the sky, which would hang stationary or follow him along as though checking his movement. <laughs> so, this dude seen the craft was following him. The dude got out, looked at it, got back in his vehicle, and the thing kept following him. Got out, you know, free bird of the sun bitch with his lighter. Got back in the vehicle and they didn't want to communicate. You know, they weren't going to do the whole tip mountain. Do, 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 do. So he drove back to his friends. And then after that, on occasion, he would see fucking red balls of light mm. flying around in the fucking sky. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. <laughs> yep. I, I don't know. I think it's weird, though. The dude had... And, like, this isn't the end of his uh, sightings either. So two years later, on March 1st, 1972, between 9 and 10 p.m., <laughs> Mr. Y was sitting on a cliffside at Compton Bay. Don't do it! Don't do it! Having been driven there by an unexpected tidal surge, seemingly caused in part at least... By some form of droning underwater craft. From his location on the cliffside, Mr. Y spotted two yellow lights approximately 40 feet away. Peering off at what? <clears throat> Peering off at me like the eyes of some horrible <laughs> sea monster. So, uh... Not far. This happened like not far below the surface. After absor observing this phenomenon, the tide eventually went back out, freeing Mr. Y, who was able to get back in his car and drive home. Hmm. Well, that's fine. Nice and pleasant. Yeah. So now when Mr. Y's yeah. daughter, Fi. <laughs> Fi. It's not the Bye. Google fucking uh, phone plan. Faye. Hey. Is Skyler having... Uh, are you okay, Skyler? Wouldn't his Bye. daughter's name be Mrs. Z? Miss Z? Fazai. <laughs> when Fazai <laughs> had her own strange encounter a year later <laughs> with Sam the sundown clown... Um, he sympathized with his, his daughter's distress and considered how it could relate to his own experience. He also had his doubts that his daughter was lying, telling Bufora, I get the impression that Faye was somehow taken into a bubble of alien reality created by this strange personage. He told them that he had just made the hut. Also, Faye told me that while they were talking to this ghost, two workmen nearby were repairing a post. Hmm. They paid no attention to this weird charade. So there was as a ghost though, they were working on a post? As though they could not see it. My daughter also come back. Hmm. Let's, never mind. He the end. <laughs> Puts his fists against the posts. And looks at the ghost. And still assists he can't see the ghosts. Or something like that. Is that it? Oh, fuck. Is that it? I don't remember. That's old Georgie boy. George. Hiya. It's okay, Georgie. Hiya, Georgie. I'm Cinder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just, I think the worst part of that's when he's a little girl. He's like, oh, I can make that. I can blow that off in just one little blow. <laughs> or something like that. One. Two. Ah! <laughs> he 
Eats her face. He munches it. Eats her face. Wait, what's he eating? What's he munching? That little girl underneath the bleachers whenever he munches her. Oh, yeah, he's not eating little girl vagina. That's good. Okay. Oh, my God. No, you sick fuck. Well, you're the one you talking go... about it, weirdos. Why don't you go fuck a monkey? <laughs> Butthole. So now. <laughs> now, after his daughter and his f and friends disclose their weird encounter to Mr. Y, Mr. Y visits the location of Sam's uh, homestead shack. <laughs> he's, he's got a little fucking, like a little farm over there with some <laughs> corn growing. <laughs> Oh, there's a weird robot alien cattle out here with uh, <laughs> a the fuck. Is that a Big Mac on them? They got a Big Mac? The, the cow looks up and goes, bark. <laughs> <laughs> I you guys like, a cow. You guys like, oh, that's not really the sound a cow makes. Ruff. I, oh, sorry. I mean, <clears throat> uh, mm, fuck. And the, the other clown looks over and goes, Clark, we're going with the caca, caca sound. <clears throat> it's a Metallica cow. Metallica cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, Mr. As Mr. Y. <laughs> Mr. Y visits the location of Sam's abode. The creature's metal... Shack was nowhere to be found, likely confirming Mr. Y's own suspicion that his daughter was taken into a bubble of alien reality. Oh, fuck. Now, was there any connection between Sam and the UFO sightings made by Mr. Y? He seems to suggest that possibly, maybe, presumably, could be. You know what? He could have just been the epitome of a Crawford Countyan, um, you know, living in a camper. Mm. Oh, yeah. It was probably, uh, yeah. You know, he probably got it from Bleak Blork's rental. <laughs> bleak, 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 bleak. And he was just, you know, cruising, looking for some clown pussy, you know? So it's like a robot Winne he's alien. Just, he's it's just like an alien robot Winnebago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely. It's got. You know, this one's really loaded. It's got the TV, the portal. To the other realm. You oh, know? you gotta have the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Over two here, fours, we've got unlimited. Yeah. We've got unlimited mm -hmm. propane. And propane oh. accessories. Propane and propane accessories. I tell you, huh, that, that, that boy ain't, ain't right, bad. Bobby. God damn mm -hmm. it, clown boy. Mm -hmm. I ought to beat the hell out of you. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, Boy, Sam, if you weren't my son, I'd hug you. <laughs> well, oh, mm -hmm. I ain't gay. So, with such an odd encounter <laughs> and, well, since with such an odd and ambiguous encounter, many people are left to form, you know, there are conclusions about what actually this was. So we'll just touch on a few of these real quick. Um, was Sam an alien? Sam was only identified as an alien due to appearing in a UFO journal. Buffal. Buffal. Yep. Buffal. That's my go-to move. Well. This is the most straightforward way of saying, of classifying Sam. And it also uh, seems to be what Mr. Y is implying by tying his daughter's interaction with Sam uh, to his own UFO sightings. So, was Sam a ghost? Faye and Vincent were convinced Sam was some sort of wandering specter. Um, when the children asked Sam if he was a ghost, Sam seemed to consider the possibility with his cryptic non or with his cryptic response. Well, not really, but I am um, in an odd sort of way. Which, 
like I said, the kid, the closest thing the kids could probably relate this to, and was more popular than Aliens was Ghost back then. Mm. Ghost and ghost so. accessories. The g- 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 ghost. Oh yeah. my god. That was good. Get Scooby. Get Scooby Doo on the matter. Scooby Dooby Doo. Uh, we got work to do now. So was Sam a weirdo human? Um, I don't want to like tur- turn this uh, into kind of a dark area, but <laughs> Sam's interest in children and you know bring him into this weird swampy windowless shack. Kind of sounds love like a, shack. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, in a sense, a love shack of sorts. Mm. But not any. But not a. But not a, cons, but not a consensual love shack. Um, but more of a chomo, uh, time space portal, of hidden? sorts. It's a hidden gem. It's a two-story villa in the middle of nowhere, with a doggy door <laughs> entrance, playing Metallica. <laughs> Yeah. And weird fucking cows. And weird cows. <laughs> that cow meowed at me, too. Meow. <laughs> but, I mean, nothing happened, though. I mean, nothing made the kids feel uneasy. Sam was quite pleasant and inviting and accommodating. You know, like your uncle showing you his left ball at mm. last year's Thanksgiving dinner, you know? Not threatening at all. Not weird. Normal. Depending on what family you're from. In fact, <laughs> so, I mean, but realistically, nothing malicious happened that would make you think that it is some kind of better <clears throat> ass. So the next one's sort of my least favorite. Um, I fucking hate when people say they use this for all sorts of shit. Um, that Sam was a shared hallucination. Yeah, I mean, with you, though, the whole mass hallucination thing kind of weird. Be like if we were three sitting on this thing right now and we all mass hallucinated TJ. <clears throat> Tongue in a monkey's butt. Mm. I don't know. I just want to take a picture. I mean, That's all I want is a fucking picture. But I mean, Not like, far fetch. But I mean, like, we either saw you uh, tongue a monkey's butt or it, we didn't. I don't think there's any, like, Shared some consensual vision of TJ and a monkey's asshole. I hope. But I admit Colleen Faye and Vincent Adultman's encounter with a. You're a dick. (laughs) Fully uh, ducks. A a fully duck. A fully duck. Fully a do. A fully adu, also known as a shared psychosis or shared delusional disorder, might be a. You took a shit with a friend. (laughs) That's a shared deuce, deuce, Mm. shared deuce disorder. I don't know. That's funny how you cross that threshold. Ah, the footbridge threshold. The wooden footbridge. The bridge of feet. Um, oh, so yeah, calling it a shared psychosis or shared delu- delu- yeah. delusional disorder might be a little bit hyperbolic. Um, we don't really know anything about these children, including their relationships with one another, their family lives, or if they were even locals to the island. They might have been um, tourists of sort. But if something traumatizing did occur to the children involving an adult male that day, the character of Sam might have been created as some kind of coping mechanism. That's not... But again, the stories line up. You, you, again, you're talking a uh, coping... I, I, uh, something like that, you, you know, coming from two kids, I don't think the stories would line up that well. You know what I mean? One would see, a, like, I don't know, maybe that one of them would see some kind of robot clown alien, and the other one might be 
Like, oh, he was some kind of lobster clown pig. Swamp a pig. lobstrosity? A lobstrosity of some sorts. Ooh, not Swamp Thing. But it does seem like their stories line up a little too much to be some kind of... Whatever. Yeah. No, I agree. And I, I hate that when skeptics, they sort of use that as like a... Oh, when they're grasping. That's like, there's been UFO encounters where they're like, oh, it's a mass hallucination. Shut the fuck up. A mass hallucination. That's, I've never understood psychologists saying that. That pisses me off. Um, That's like, I think the Fatima. Oh, what's it called? Tabula Raza. <laughs> oh, there it is. I fucking hate you. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm going to look it up. I can edit. Well, as I say, I think, like, I think an event could be perceived differently by different people. But, again, to have, like, two the kids especially um, recount an event so similarly, I don't know. It would make more sense if they were, like, yeah, cool. again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So... Um, miracle, the miracle of the sun, or also known as the miracle of Fatima, um, is an event that happened in 1917 when a large crowd of people gathered at Fatima, Portugal, in response to a prophecy made by three shepherd children. Um, the prophecy was that the Virgin Mary, who was the Our Lady of Fatima, would appear and perform miracles on that date. And apparently they seen this lady. She's there juggling, doing <laughs> <laughs> backflips, and man, this is amazing. But no, it's shit like that. I like. I don't care. Like they seen something. It's a, a a giant crowd. You know, not under the influence of a collective hallucinogen. Hallucinogen. Yeah. So, I agree with you on that one, Zul. And last but least likely, Sam was a prank. Finger guns. Finger guns. Yeah. I mean, kids get bored. Kids get bored. They get bored. They make up stories to entertain themselves. You know, they live their lives in a in a kind of a gray area between fiction and reality. Sometimes, you know, yeah. we all did it. You know, uh, children have very vivid imaginations, and it, this could have been maybe a not a prank or I don't know. But yeah, some kind of prank that Faye's father, Mister Y took seriously because of his own prior experiences with pranks and weird Joking alien clowns. Yeah. I don't agree. Like, the kids were, from what I read in the journal, the kids' story was consistent with each other. Um, kids at that age um, don't typically tell lies and it be consistent between each other. I interview you know, hundreds of kids each year with my job. TJ's a talent scout for Disney, by the way. No, I'm not saying. People <laughs> can figure out what the fuck I am, but um, I'm not a pedophile either. I just thought about that if I'm talking to kids all day. <laughs> I'm driving around in my van just I, interviewing careful. kids. Careful, don't. Uh, yeah, I invited a few kids into my windowless metal shack. Uh, <laughs> Put on oh my God, Metallica. I got it. I know what TJ's job is. He's the fucking Sam, the robot clown. Mm-hmm. You're Would him. Would you like to see my pee-pee? <laughs> danger, <laughs> danger, Will Robinson, danger. But no, um, This kids. microphone is actually my cock. My cock Jesus. phone. But Blow into kids the Kids never, they, uh, 
I can probably count one or two times in all the interviews I've done throughout my years on kids that would be able to do this. So I don't think it's a prank. I think they actually seen it. There's too much detail to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so fa- what do you what do you think it is? Mr. I have no Teach. fucking clue. It's weird. Um some sort of uh oh not extraterrestrial, but um oh dimensional interloper. <laughs> you I know it's a homeless man. Yep. Yep, because, you know, you enter a homeless man's little uh, doggy door and all of a sudden it shoots up to two foot, or, you know, two you know, stories. What kids, what kids thinks, <clears throat> excuse me, what kids think <laughs> is a, uh, you know, windowless metal shed is probably just his shopping cart full of cans. Yep. <laughs> I'm old Greg. <laughs> these kids are, you know, we'll say about five foot, five foot, four foot. Also, they they get into there and they stand up. Yeah. So this thing has to have some considerable height. Okay, it's in a order big to see two stories. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what it was. I it's hard to say, but I. I mean, I don't think it's any like, a some guy, a homeless guy. But we are paranormal and like uh. Alien encounters, like, our history's riddled with these kinds of things, you know? Weird shit that we can't fucking explain. So. It's strange that it's a one-off thing where it's like there's not any other, I mean, as far as we know, as far as what we've seen, research read or whatever, there's not a, there's no other Sam Clown experience that anyone else has come forth with. No, that's... You know, but I don't know. I, I don't, I'm with you though. I think some kind of interdimensional uh, weirdo is uh, intergalactic. You know, intergalactic, Sammy Clowny, Sammy Clowny. <laughs> intergalactic. He came in. He was like, I want to hang out on this like beachhead here. I think I, you know it's a good beach for troops to come come in, mm. especially the French. You know, I love when the French come in. He <laughs> brings. He has some brie cheese, some brie, you know. Hey, I love coming in French. Yeah. He slides his little doggy door open. He was hoping for some, some French Metallica. maidens. Yeah. Yeah, iron. So, Burton, what do you think about this? It's entertaining. I think it's probably baloney. Probably why though? Probably bull- like bullshits. Why? Does like it knowing it like. I think the kids made it up. But with me telling you that more likely that didn't happen because of the way the story is told. Yeah, the story could have been told any way they wanted it to be. The, for all you know, the fucking magazine, the magazine wrote up half the shit wrong. That's fair, too. Why would... Eh, Sell it. I don't think that's as yeah. much... Com- no, it's a UFO journal. They, they didn't, like... They weren't UFO journals weren't in it back in the day to make money. They were in it to fucking you know, get the news out there. But they're not ri- Yeah, but they're not written by infallible machines. They're written by humans who even if they intend to do good or intend to mm-hmm. you know. I mean it's cool, just like anything else. I'd love to see fail. Sam the Clam Sam the Clam man. I wanna see a Let's I see. wanna go and see Sam sing fucking the Dark Side of the Moon in his entirety. <laughs> I think that would be, uh, I think that would be, you know, good for him. That was perfect timing, though, when I seen when this actually happened and when Dark Side came out. Yeah, I, I don't think like, we oh, specified. Yeah, I gotta that. use it. Yeah, I don't think we specified that. Why we keep bringing up Dark Side, or did we? Did we? Mm. No. So Dark Side came out two months prior to this encounter. Mm. And, That's probably uh, why he showed Dark up. He, yeah. It's probably actually more likely he the way they describe him he sounds like Roger Waters. <laughs> it sounds like he's got the singing talent too of Roger Waters. Oh Roger. 
Rider, Rider. Like, I think, uh, cool together. Yeah, I think, uh... Yeah, he probably came to this dimension because he wanted to hear Dark Side of the Moon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And probably. watch WWE. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Wrestling entertainment. Yeah. I think it was... So... <laughs> Next Blair. week, Woo! we're going to be getting into, uh, we're actually finally going to be getting into Bill Cooper. Um, I was going to do it this week, but we wanted to try to separate it with a cryptid, so we're not doing a shit ton of conspiracy. Um, <laughs> we are finally going to get s so deep into <laughs> Mr. <Yep>. Cooper. <laughs> I'm I'm fucking I hate reading that book, dude. I've read the first like 200 pages twice now, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So, um, but after that, we've got a few more cryptids, and we're gonna get into Epstein. Who's that? And then the Clinton kill list. Whoa, so we're gonna have one of the us... CIA so far up our asshole. So if one of us. Shoots ourselves twice or three times in the head. Mm, and then hangs ourselves. And then hangs while we're hanging ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> That'll probably... probably be me. They'll blame it on the divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he, like, I, like, but I know he was, he wasn't mm. that upset about it. He, he shot himself with the shotgun, but there were no shells loaded up. <laughs> then he proceeded in getting up, hanging himself. <laughs> And by a reason, stretchy there's, underwear. There's cum all over the ground for some reason. And then, then, he, committed, then he committed Harry Carey. He grabbed him a beer, or a beer, started drinking another beer, and then shot himself again. And then we found all these pictures of monkey buttholes on his computer. <laughs> uh, man, you know what? That's what fucking old uh, Subway dude should have done. Instead of looking at child porn, he should have looked at monkey buttholes. Mm -hmm. Monkey butts don't, or monkeys don't have rights. Or just fuck those breads. Put that dick between them breads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The subway. The, the... Uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know. How do you feel about, like, when you go into a subway? I used to love the smell of subway. But now I go in there and I come out and I'm like, ugh, stinky bread. Yeah. I don't know. Feels like Jared's cock. I don't ever go into subway because it's like eleven ninety nine for a six inch. That's, you get a foot long for a lot cheaper on the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she even has a decency to dress it on up, the, too. On the street, <laughs> yeah. She'll at least have titties. Mm. <laughs> Let's fight tug of war with my cock. <laughs> uh, she, you get to making out, and she's like, Let's see who's got the bigger dick. I'm like, Okay. At least get out of my car. You do. You do. <laughs> you I wasn't won. anticipating flicking the dick. I was going to flick the bean instead. <laughs> I flicked something and it it woke up and got bigger. Sometimes that ate my hand. Sometimes you got to <laughs> suck it to stay alive, though. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> nope. That is not my mantra. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. So, TJ, anyways, we got some... Would you rather suck a dick for 400000 or get fucked in the ass for a million? I'd ask if I could do uh, them both. Jesus yeah. Christ. Bird's like, I'm going to do this anyway, so how about <laughs> let's just do both? Hey, a million point four? Hey. So, I mean, I don't, so, yeah, you're probably, you're probably right, Burton. You are. My pride's uh, worth a lot less. Nope. I'm not going to have a pee-pee go in my mouth. That, I get nervous when my... Well... If it's clean. Say I get nervous when my finger breaks through the toilet paper. <laughs> but I may just have to take one in the butt. Pretend I'm pooping in reverse. <laughs> that could feel nice. I like, like you know... Think nope. how good yeah, I don't think yeah. it would. Yeah. Nope. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll Anyways. Probably... Anyways. Well, follow us on all the socials. Thank Maybe. you for listening to that, and yes. Thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate it. We love you. Um, keep, share us with your friend. Share us with your priest. 
Shares with your pastures. Pastures. Past pastures. And your yeah, animals in your pastures. pastures. Take us in the pastures. Tell with the, the cow sheep. about it. Let the cows Tell know. your grandma. Uh, tell the lunch lady. Happy or the belated. receptionist at your work. Happy belated Cinco yeah. de Mayo. Yep. I hope you're drinking tequila right now, whatever you're doing. Surgery, open heart surgery. Uh, you know, you're in court. Yep. Trying to keep Cliff. a uh, trying to keep a child molesting clown off the streets. Mm. Yep. Make sure you got judge. Tequila. Shots. <laughs> Shots on me, uh, judge. So, thanks, guys. All right, tune in next week. We love your faces. <gasps> Bye -bye. Burns in a hurry, so go fuck yourselves. Uh, la, 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 la. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs>